And welcome everybody. Uh, this is our uh, this is a special our pirates meeting, and today the theme is rock your data viz world with ggplot. Um, what it actually is is a uh, it's going to be a a step by step tutorial uh, through this the semi famous or shall I say notorious plot from the Economist magazine and the Economist website that's been used as a basis for tutorials for a number of years. And what we're going to do this evening is we're actually going to step through this and replicate this plot. What you see here in this slide is the actual uh, plot as it appeared on the Economist website. It is, uh, it's, it's, a plot of, of kind of aggregated data of corruption and human development. I don't know too, too much of, of about the actual data set itself, but uh, you know, a, a number of the things that we're going to do in here is we'll, we'll, we'll be customizing the, these dots in this scatter plot will be there's, you'll notice that there's a couple of different kinds of labels that appear here. And in some cases there aren't labels. Um, you know, there's a nice use, <clears throat> excuse me, of fonts. Um, they're uh, indicating some um, the regions of the world using different colors of these dots. Um, there's multiple legends, one of which applies to this trend line that they've got uh, overlaid here. The fact that we have a trend line on it, um, really nice presentation of the uh, label axis or the axis labels and the um, and these grid lines that customize grid lines. And uh, we've got a, a funky little uh, superscript appearing in this legend. And we've got a, a footnote that appears. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start with the basics, uh, uh, some lightweight preparation of the data for this. And then we'll go take it all the way through to something that looks almost exactly the same. Okay. Now, just uh, I'm going to put in a word before we uh, jump in for the, the ggplot cheat sheet. Most of you know, uh, if you've used R for some time, that R Studio publishes uh, um, a number of really high quality cheat sheets uh, from their website, which is accessible through the help menu in R Studio, both the desktop version of R Studio and R Studio server. Uh, the ggplot uh, cheat sheet is a work of art. Uh, it's really cool because they kind of explain uh, the, the basic structure uh, um, or kind of the top level grammar for a, a, a plot that's made with ggplot. What I call, I call it a ggplot stack um, because it's a set of layers. And then uh, based on the kind of plot that you want to make one variable, multiple variables, um, different kinds of plots, they, uh, they show the, um, the function that you'll use for uh, specifying the, that geometry, what's called the geometry. But they also give you a, a mini uh, uh, example uh, using built-in uh, data frames. So each one of these, and it's, unfortunately it's difficult to see in this with this magnification, but each of these uh, sections of this cheat sheet has worked examples that you can use um, almost like a tutorial unto itself. Uh, there are some sort of built-in statistical things that you can do to G within ggplot uh, that we're not really going to talk about tonight. I suppose the smoothing line is almost that. Um, there's some interesting things about scale customization. They've got it explained here. We do cover that tonight. Um, and there's different things about monkeying with the coordinate system. And over here in the upper right, this faceted stuff is facet grid uh, related stuff is, is very cool. So there's uh, a link. And I should note that this um, set of slides will be made available publicly. It's not available right now because I've been editing it up until, well, I may edit it even during the presentation. I don't know. But this, um, but as I said, this is available through our studio, through the R Studio help menu. And you, 
really should check it out after the talk um, or even during the talk if you're trying to understand what I'm doing. All right, so first thing you do in your uh, R code, whether it's your, your you making an R notebook or, or whatever, is you've got a, a set of libraries that you're gonna wanna uh, put in. Of course, this is all about ggplot uh, or ggplot2, so we're gonna have our, uh, we're gonna include that. Um, one of the things we're going to do as part of the tutorial is uh, have offset labels from the dots on the scatter plot. And the package we'll use for that is called ggrepel. And as you'll see, ggrepel provides uh, certain uh, um, alternate versions of geometries like geome text, which uh, offset labels from uh, dots or whatever in a particular way. Uh, GG themes lets us uh, brings in uh, some custom themes and lets us uh, play with the themes. Um, and that's typically how you do some of the finer uh, customizations in your labels and that sort of thing. Uh, we want to bring in a, uh, some custom fonts. So we use the extra font package. Um, uh, there's some customization of the grid lines that comes in with the grid package. And then because we're doing some data transformation, uh, our Ninja toolkit is the tidyverse. We'll use that for everything from specialized reading in of the data frame to other stuff. So this is, these are the packages that we're going to use um, in this tutorial. If you try to replicate this tutorial on your own, or one of the versions of, of this that you can find online by Googling, um, you, you, may, you may have to install these packages beforehand. You probably won't have to install ggplot if you've been using uh, R for any length of time and possibly not tidyverse, but some of these other ones you might have to install. <clears throat> okay, let's take a quick look at our data. Cool plot always starts with the data. Um, so, uh, I provide a link to the original appearance of the uh, of the figure on the, the Economist website. This link resolves, but due to various security things that I've got set up on my system, I can't actually see it. It's and I don't know if it's because of the Economist paywall or just because I've got cookies and JavaScript and all sorts of things turned off on most of these sites. But this link does resolve to where the plot that we're working on first appeared. Um, the data set uh, is actually downloaded from the GitHub that was used in a um, Harvard uh, data science workshop um, several years ago. Uh, that's where I saw the, the first version of this tutorial um, that I worked through and demonstrated in a uh, R bootcamp at RPI. Um, it's uh, I, I've kind of strayed from that in this a little bit because, um, because R has evolved and ggplot has evolved a, a little bit. Some things are a little bit more straightforward. Um, so I download that CSV into my local directory, and then I use the reader uh, read underscore CSV function uh, to read that CSV in. Uh, and there's my data frame economist, whoops, economist data. That's what we'll be using. Um, let's take a kind of a look at what we've got in that data frame. Uh, one of the reasons I use read underscore CSV instead of read dot CSV is in my experience, it, it handles um, and interprets the, uh, the data into the right, uh, it makes the right decisions as far as the type of the, the columns uh, more often than read.csv tends to. Um, so what we see in this data frame is there's a country, there's this, um, uh, this uh, I'm sorry, let me grab my, let me look at what that is. Yeah, it's a human development index versus corruption perceptions index. Okay, so we've got our human development index, HDI, we've got our corruption uh, index, um, we've got regions uh, indicated for each of the countries. Um, now, one of the things to take note of here is how it interpreted 
those regions, it just, it just saw those as character strings. Um, and that's going to be important in a couple steps. Do we actually want those to be character strings or do we want them to be something else? Um, and this is using STR to review our data is, is a, it's a nice, concise summary of the, the types, um, uh, the, you know, and the size of the data. Um, uh, some, but it doesn't give us certain kinds of summaries. If we, if we do an actual summary of it, we see uh, a little bit differently. Um, we see that there's 173 different countries. We've got uh, these numerical data gives us our min max um, and that sort of thing. And this is what's interesting. If we look at the region, okay, it, since it sees this as just character strings, there's 173 different values. Um, it's, but we know that there's only a, 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 a set of regions, something like six, and that's gonna play, um, that's, we're gonna have to take that into consideration. Another way that we could review our data is obviously just to do, just to ex examine a subset of it. Like if we look at, if we do a head or we do a tail, <laughs> um, we see, we can kind of see what the data is. But the problem with doing that, obviously, is you're not really getting a summary of the data. You're just kind of, you're looking at the data, but uh, for large data sets, it's, it's really of limited usage uh, to, to do a head or a, or a tail. Um, but you could kind of get a sense of, of the data. But what I'm trying to say is that if we look at that region column, we've got no clue what the different values are by looking at that. Um, okay, so this is our this is the data that we're going to be working at. Remember that we've got plots for every country. Uh, it's going to be uh, HDI versus CPI, or actually CPI versus HDI, and and we're going to colorize by the regions according to the original one. So how do we get there? Well, the first thing we observe is we need to turn that uh, region column into a factor. Uh, so this is important because uh, a factor is what uh, different geometries in ggplot want to see uh, as a basis for varying the color. Um, the other thing that we saw is that the regions as they appeared in that column did not match, uh, match the, 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 the labels that we saw in that uh, economist plot. Uh, they were similar, but they weren't the same. So in, in one step, what we're going to do is convert uh, that region column from, um, from characters uh, to a factor. A factor, uh, a, a factor vector is one where there's only a, where every value <coughs> is coming from a, a limited set or closed set of values. Um, what we're going to do is map the, um, the levels as they appear to a new set of labels. The default would be to use the levels uh, that are given as the labels, but what we're going to do is map the levels that appear in that uh, in that vector to the labels that we want to see in our final plot. And also notice it's at this point that we also can do nice things like uh, insert line breaks. So this Asia and Oceania will appear when it when it's appearing on the plot somewhere, probably in the legend. It's going to be two lines, and we see that for for several of these. So. This operation and this assignment is going to overwrite uh, this uh, region column in the data frame with um, uh, this revised version. And now let's take a look at what that gives us. Oh, and the other thing I should note is I'm using a base R here rather than a kind of a tidyverse uh, reordering of the factors or changing the factors. And, and that's because uh, in this case, it's actually much easier, much easier to understand um, uh, what you're doing uh, in, in changing this, in this relabeling 
of this um, of this factor vector. It's just more literate to do this transformation this way than the tidyverse way. And and I, I say that because I tried it. I you know I've tried to rewrite this in a different way, and I was successful. But this is much cleaner. It's much more literate. Okay, so let's let's look at what our result is. So immediately when we look at the apply the structure command to the, just this vector, we see um, even though there was 173 rows, uh, that column is made up of uh, only six different levels. And it lists them here and it shows the uh, how each row is mapped, which we don't necessarily care about. We might for something else, but we see that this is now a, indeed a factor vector. Um, and then if we summarize it, we can actually see how many occur. So we do a summary of this, of this vector and we, we see that there's you know, six different values and this is how uh, the data is distributed. So our data frame is now transformed. Uh, we've got that, we've done our work on that region, uh, that region column, which will allow us to uh, do something. So let's kind of dive in. And so uh, the first thing we do is we, uh, we just build our plot object and we do a, um, a, a very simple plot. Now, um, I'm gonna do something in this tutorial that is a little different than what you might do in your actual code. What I'm, what I'm gonna do is as I build this plot, uh, as I add the layers um, with each layer that layer modification that I want to keep, I'm going to I'm going to have a new uh, plot object as a, an assignment here. I'm going to my base object. Let's call it the base object is going to be graph one, and then as I build new layers that I want to keep, I'll have graph two, graph three, graph four. Uh, in a we'll show you at the very end what you would what. Um, you would do in practice or what you might do in practice. Um, so, so let's start. Um, oh, the, the other thing I, I wanted to, a uh, little tidbit uh, that you might be curious about. Uh, it turns out that ggplot doesn't do, or R doesn't do anything with the ggplot object until it's actually plotted. So as we build, as we construct these layers, we're sort of setting up this data structure, but it's not evaluated until you actually uh, produce it, until you actually plot it, ask it to plot it in some way. Um, so so the, the, it's just setting up sort of the definition of your object. So let's look at this. Graph one, uh, we're, we're taking our data frame and ggplot wants to work with data frames. Um, and we're piping it into the, our, this, our basic ggplot uh, instruction, which is to construct, to initialize the ggplot object. We're saying it's gonna be CPI uh, versus HDI. Our X axis is gonna be from the CPI column. Our HDI is gonna be, uh, or our Y is gonna be from the, um, uh, from the HDI and we're going to, and I'm doing a little trick here. I'm getting rid of the gray background immediately so that the rest of our tutorial is gonna be clean. So I'm, I'm just making a management decision to, to, to set this theme underscore BW, one of the stored, uh, one of the preset themes, just to get rid of the standard ggplot gray um, background, just to make things nice. Now, this doesn't do anything in terms of plotting. What we need to do is at least give a, a ggplot a, some kind of geometry uh, with which to render this, um, this, this data. So here we've got this, uh, this evaluation. Now note, I'm not making an assignment here. I'm just testing this. I'm just gonna, let's try to evaluate this and see what happens. I do my graph one plus uh, my uh, the uh, geome point, and I'm saying with this aesthetic command here, uh, the same as what we had up here, this aesthetic command, I'm saying I want the color of the dots to vary by uh, wh whatever the region is. 
Okay. Now this is this wants to. Um, this is why we went to the trouble of making factors. Region is a is one of a discrete set, or there's six different values, and so our color is going to vary uh, based on what this is. So this is this is the basic plot, and you could and, and um, if you add a title to this and have better looking uh, better looking axes labels, you could probably get away with just this uh, in a notebook. Uh, we see that we automatically got by simply adding this aesthetic and telling it and not telling it to not show it. We've got a, a you know nice labeling, um, but there's a lot of things that are wrong with this. You know, it's the the colors don't match what the example was. Uh, the shape doesn't match. These are small uh, solid dots. Um, we don't have any of our labelings. We don't have our trend line. Um, we don't, we, uh, we, we don't have our, um, I, I should say we didn't have our access labels, but we don't have our country labels in here. We don't have the title of the plot. There's a lot in the, the, the legends are, or there's one legend and it's in the wrong spot. So there's a lot of stuff that we have to do to really fix this up. You know, some of this may seem arbitrary, just to make it pretty, but some of this you want to have, you know, HDI, what's that? You know, I don't know what that is. Is this the kind of scale that we want? There's no label points off for that. Um, where did we get our data from? You know, maybe we want this to be like you see in a magazine or New York Times, uh, where you've got your data source indicated in a in a caption. So let's see how to do this. Okay, the first thing is let's work on those points. Um, so these are our different options that we can have with our um, our plots that we can specify what the shape is. The one that's closest to what we had in that economist is 21. So it's what this is is a uh, it's a it's a circle with some color specified uh, in the middle. Okay, so let's let's try that out. So what we're going to do is um, now you, you've got a choice that you can specify inside of the aesthetic or outside of the aesthetic um, when you're forcing it. When you put these um, these attributes outside of the aesthetic, you're actually operating. It's it's kind of hard to explain um, articulate in an articulate way, but you're operating at a lower level in the in the stack. And, and essentially, what we're doing is we're forcing those. So we're forcing the shape to be this shape twenty one uh, rather than dependent on something. You could. In, in theory, make these shapes dependent on, on one of your data values. Um, and we're forcing the fill to be white. We could make it, uh, we, we could just leave it at that upper level. So you see what we're doing? The border is being, uh, is, is at this upper aesthetic level and the border color is, is based on the region, but the fill is being forced to white. So let's look at that. And that's getting closer, you know, that's, we've got dots with circles and, but, uh, but they're the wrong size. The, the, uh, the, the border or the stroke of the circles is wrong. Um, how do we take care of that? And so again, you're, you're, we're in that same, now notice up here, we didn't make an assignment. We're just testing this down here. We're going to do this for real. Um, we, there's our shape and our fill as we did before. We're going to crank up the size just a little bit to the three, um, and we're we're going to crank up this stroke or the thickness of this uh, border of this circle, um, and that looks pretty good. So we're going to save this as graph two or assign this to graph two, and so we're going to use this as the basis for our next uh, our next step. Okay, our next step is we're going to work on this fit line. And here, what we're, uh, it's kind of arbitrary. Uh, you, um, we're, we're going to basically have, we're going to layer on a smooth line. And uh, smoothing, you can, you, you can use, there's a number of different methods. If you do a question mark geom smooth in the console, it'll list the different methods or different uh, spline methods, there's lows, there's a number of, of different ones in there. So you specify the method and you specify essentially the, the, the formula that it's going to use for its mapping. And by default, what it's going to do 
is it's going to give you your line and it's going to give you a, a standard error um, uh, grayed out area. And that may be useful for, uh, you know, for something. It's um, for this tutorial, it's not part of what the economist did, so we're not going to include it. Uh, we can also notice that there's some, there may be some other things that we need to take care of. So let's look at this. So we turn off um, S, the standard error, the SE param in the geome smooth. Um, we got to adjust, we see we have to adjust our color. The original was, uh, the original was red. Um, Okay, let's take a look at that. And the other thing that we did is it, uh, I should make a note of this. We did not specify what type of line to use, uh, dashed, dotted, mixed dash and dotted, solid. It happened to give us the one that we wanted, but what we want to do is uh, just for demo purposes, force it to the kind of line that we want. So here we're specifying the line type we're specifying this this color now. This is a a, a funny thing that ggplot um, ggplot geometries will do when you we force this. It's notice that it's we're forcing it to red, and it's so it's taking the color red, but it's also sort of treating it like a you know like a variable also. So it's. It's kind of being weird, and we'll we'll sort through this. But it, so it's this is partly a placeholder and partly accomplishing our goal of setting at a low level the color of this this fit line. So this is this is close, and we'll deal with this other refining this um, at a different level when we deal with the legends. So we make this graph object three. We're making progress. Okay. Now, getting basic labels on is pretty easy, but it's really ugly. So we, when you add, when you want to add text to your dots or to other elements of geometry, it's you just use the geom text, um, geom text uh, function. And notice this is similar to what we did for um, uh, for the the dots. We we've got, we're gonna we're going to add labels. Well, what should those labels be based on? Well, we want them to be based on uh, the country names. Okay, at, at a, this is our first approximation. So we, we do that and let's see what we get. And it's a mess, you know, we've got labels for every country. That's not what the final thing was and it's unreadable. So what we actually want is only some of these uh, to be labeled. But if you remember that original plot, they're labeled in a couple different ways. Some are uh, sort of adjacent to the country points, and some of them are, there's a, 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 a gap and a separation line. So what we're going to need to do is, is create uh, lists of the different countries, and we'll use those lists as a basis for what we're going to do. So here are, you know, here are a couple uh, lists of countries. Um, the point one, as we're calling this, this list are the the countries for which the labels appear, but uh, they don't have connection lines. So those will be put on in one layer that we add. Uh, point two, these are countries that have um, separating, there will be short connection lines associated with them. And then there's this other one, which is uh, basically, these two put together, which is an artifact of um, generations of this tutorial. Okay, so let's put the first one on. It's and and what we're doing here is it's very similar to what we did before the genome text, but we're saying um, our our source of data for this is only where um, only label. The point where the um, where the that the, that country name for that point is in the set uh, we defined point one, okay, and and 
use the aesthetic, the label equals country. So this, the, the aesthetic is the same as what we did before, use that country's name, but we're being selective about which points we're actually going to label. We're only for the ones that are in this, um, uh, in this point one. So that's, that's this set. Now, uh, we see that we still have the problem of those labels be, uh, being on top of the dots. So we should figure out how to fix that first before we go on to the next thing. So this is where that GG repel package comes in. It has the equivalent uh, function, geom text, but it's geom text repel. We see that our, our syntax for this uh, is exactly the same as what it was for geom text. It's just applying its repel algorithm. And so we like this for this layer. So we call it, we are signing this graph four. So these, we're, we're saying these separations are good enough. Okay. And but now we have to deal with the other ones, the ones that have the connecting line. So here it's, we're going to use the, the same uh, function again. Uh, so in graph four, we had our, our first set of text repels. Here we've got our second set of text repels, but this time the logic is for, you know, put the name on when the, it's point 0.2. Now I haven't changed anything here. So what do we see? We see exactly what we saw before, um, but we're, we're not getting our separation lines, you know, so, and, and we want this set, the points or the countries in point, the point 0.2 list to be further away. So we're going to have to add some parameters, which stress it out. Uh, stretch it out. So that's what it is here. There's a parameter in the GM text repel called box padding, and it's got a um, it's got a, a distance, and it's the syntax of this is saying um, make that connection with lines. We could just force it. Um, I think that there's a syntax which would just force it away further. But what we're saying is um, we give it this this distance uh, metric and we tell it uh, lines. And for this tutorial, this is good enough. So we, uh, we bless it, we call it graph five. Okay, so we've got, we've got our countries that are, 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 we got our dots that are labeled close. We got our dots that are labeled far. Um, now, what's next? Okay, now we're gonna spend some time fixing up this legend. Uh, we've got several things that we need to do. Uh, the first thing we want to do is fix our, uh, fix the legend for our fit line. And this is kind of, this is where actually uh, I'm one up on the guys that uh, created tutorials um, that tried to emulate this plot. Um, I actually make this R squared look the way it's supposed to as an R squared instead of an R up to. And the way I'm doing this is when I'm specifying, um, uh, I'm using, first of all, I'm using a scale fill manual to customize my, um, customize my, my scale. And then I'm saying when in my labels specification where normally I would just have a, um, a you know, like some text value or whatever for my label, I'm using this expression function, which is really kind of funky. But what it's doing, it's it's kind of a hybrid where it's it's doing this, it's representing the R squared, um, and then it's sort of pasting this equals fifty two percent onto it to get this. And this this took um, a little bit of munging and a lot of looking at Stack Overflow, uh, and that's simply because it's uh, R's explanation of this is is kind of arcane. Um, but it's, uh, it, it's legit, it's giving me what I want. Okay, and then, so that's, so this is for, um, this is customizing this. Now, I'm, for my other scale, what I'm doing is, I'm, all I need to do is force uh, the colors to be different than what R uh, or what ggplot is automatically assigning them to be. So. Uh, these are the, the hex color codes for the six, um, six regions that we're going to force these to be in. And, and it's just automatically going to 
to change these. So, so these two scale operations, and this is what's often confusing to people um, when you're trying to customize it, it is this, uh, you, you're often having to do some kind of scale manipulation like this to um, to get it to to get the colors the way you want or to reorder them or something like that. So here we got we've got our graph six. Um, it's looking good, but but I should go back. But um, but we um, we still that takes care of how that what they look like, but that's not taking care of where it is. <clears throat> so here it's it's very simple to move it. We're just saying, take this, uh, use the theme function in a very basic way to, to move your um, the, the legend to the top. If you do a question mark, um, question mark theme in the console, you'll see that there is a bazillion different uh, parameters that you can set with theme. Uh, theme is, is how you do so much of the customization. So here, what we've done is without any other parameters set, we've just said, move our scale from the default to the top and we get it on the top. But we see that it looks nothing like uh, the nice single line um, that they had in the economist plot. So how do we do that? Let's look. Well, there's our theme legend top, okay? Now we're going to null out the goofy, um, my lines that was, if we look back here, it said my lines, we're gonna use the element blank to say, I don't want, um, I don't want the other part of that label. Um, I want to force it to be horizontal. I'm gonna force a particular font size, font size, uh, font size uh, 8.5. Now I should warn you, element text is a confusing function. You might think you're supposed to put uh, you might think you're supposed to put a value into element text, like a, a string or whatever. No, element text is setting parameters uh, for the, the text values. Okay, and then um, uh, and then we're, we're going to use the um, this guides function to do two things. One is it's going to constrain our legends to one row. That's this first part, m row equals one. And then um, we're going to, but pretty much what we're controlling here is this, uh, is this second one. And we're gonna force this to be uh, second in order. So this is really tricky and, and took some research. Um, and and I, again, this is one of the things that other people who have done this tutorial, uh, presented this tutorial have not implemented is putting this R squared equals 52% in the correct location. Um, this is how you do it, is with this guide thing. So graph seven um, is, uh, is, we're pretty close here. We're still missing all of our custom, our, our custom axes, our grid, all that kind of stuff. So we'll kind of crank along here. Uh, we're making progress. Um, there's, uh, a number of grid manipulations that we want to have um, in terms of adjusting the color, adjusting which is uh, which is our major grid versus our minor grid, whether they should be suppressed. Um, notice that when we look at this, we've got um, y-axis uh, grids showing, but we've got x-axis. Uh, uh, the well, I'm, I'm sorry, we've yeah, we've got horizontal showing. We've got the vertical suppressed. Um, and we've got a, a particular line size set. Um, so this lays in this. We, we do realize though, after this, that our, our grid spacing is not what we want it to be. So we, we're gonna have to modify this and set, um, and there's some description here, we, we have to modify both the range to reflect what, what's in that uh, economist plot. And we also need to um, modify the, the, the spacing to, uh, to indicate. So we've got two continuous scales, both the HDI and the CDI were continuous, um, but we're gonna force the 
you know, force the limits on that. We're going to force the, uh, we're force our breaks. We're going to force, um, which is forcing the, the spacing. But the, and the other thing we're doing is we're going to add, we're going to um, replace the default uh, axis label, which came from our data frame, the column name in the data frame to be, to reflect the text that's more meaningful. And this is, so, so if you're out there, somebody says, well, uh, you should make this plot more understandable, make that, that axis label be actually what it is and not the variable name. Uh, this is probably the easiest way to do it is to, to force it in, in this way. Um, okay, so this is, uh, with this, we have graph nine, so we've got our grid correct. We've got our, at least our axis labels correct. There's still things missing. Okay, so what else do we need? Well, there's a couple of things. Number one, we want to, um, we want to have uh, italics on our labels. We might want to resize those labels to a nicer size. It's at this point, you could also put a, uh, a font family in if you had a particular font that you wanted to use, you can you do it in this within this element text function as well, and you can do notice you can do that separately for uh, for that. Now notice the other thing is we're turning off our um, our axis ticks on a um, for for y, which would be our verticals. Um, so we're getting close. We got graph ten. Okay. Uh, now let's go to. Um, this is this is probably the the easiest thing we're doing in the whole thing is we're we're adding a title and we're adding uh, a, a new line character at the end to give us a little bit of space. So GG title is built in, uh, obviously. Um, there's other ways to add the title as well using the labs or labels uh, function where you can add a title and several other things. Here I'm demonstrating because I want to do it one at a time, I'm, I'm adding using the, the title. Um, and then we've got a lot of customization here that we're doing on that using the theme function again. Um, and again, look at what we're doing. So for the plot title, we're setting these element text parameters. So there's a horizontal justifi justification or vertical justification. So these are placement. Um, and I should say that this minus is what's causing that clipping that you see over here. Um, the, one of the features of this plot is that they, they have this title kind of over a little bit and we'll, we'll fix the clipping a little bit later. Our font size, the face, um, and just for giggles, I use this uh, uh, Deja Vu Sans Condensed. It's, uh, it's, you know, it's, I think that's what, actually might have been the default anyways, but I'm, at least I'm forcing it. I'm, I'm sh demonstrating forcing a, a font family here. Okay. Um, so we've, we're, we're still, we don't have a caption on here yet, um, but we're getting very, very close. Okay. So let's look at this. So here we've got, um, uh, we're using the ggplot uh, labels function to specify the caption. And this is the text. And it turns out that um, the, the default positioning probably was OK. But I wanted to demonstrate forcing the location. So I'm using the h just is equal to 0. So it's lining up with the, the, the left, um, with the, the, the left side. And this, this plot position thing is kind of funky. It's plot versus panel um, and and actually I think panel is the default this, but this is the one that worked and notice that our uh, in the original it was not italic so that's fine the default font size uh, was perfect so we didn't have to modify that so we're um, now this is another thing that's kind of new. It's only recently that ggplots, the, the, the labels function actually did this correctly. Um, it used to be that you'd have to use a, a, a function from a different package called cowplot uh, to, to basically 
um, manipulate the ggplot object and, and force this uh, force this caption in. You can now 100% do this tutorial with the uh, with native ggplot functions. So so there's our um, there's our our thing. Um, and what I'm going to do next is I mentioned before. So what we've been doing throughout this tutorial is we've been kind of adding. Uh, layer and layer and layer to create our object and then essentially executing the, the plotting of that. Um, you probably wouldn't, unless you had some special reason, you probably wouldn't do that in your normal code. Your normal code would look something more like this. And I apologize, um, I meant to put comments in at each of these uh, each of the different stages, you can you can add a column, a, a comment at any point in here to kind of create a literate ggplot stack. But it works the way uh, the way you would expect. You know, we're we're assigning to our plot object. We start out the top with our creating our basic object, and we go through our geometry. We add our smooth line. We add our uh, our text for the two different sets of countries. We manipulate the scales. Uh, including adding that that expression, um, we manipulate the position of the 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 uh, the, the legend. Um, we um, we manipulate the grid. We monkey around with those scales to get the the to get the uh, spacing um, to be what we wanted and the labels to be what we wanted. We dinked around with the ticks and the um, on the axis uh, in the the italics and axes, um, finalized our, now here, instead of using GG title, what I'm doing is in the labels command, I am doing both the title, setting the title and the caption. I could also set a subtitle if I wanted to. You can do question mark labs to see the different things on that. And then uh, just, you know, finalizing my styling for my theme and, um, and then a, a couple tricky things, uh, one last tricky thing. This last theme command is actually set, forcing a bigger margin around this plot, okay? And there were a couple of things where in an earlier version of my code, uh, before I moved this R squared equals 52 to the right, I noticed that Sub-Saharan Africa was actually being cut off only sub in Africa was showing. Can imagine this being slid over. Um, so I had to, uh, I, the code where I specified the order fixed that, but we needed more right margin. We needed more left margin on this plot. So this, this last theme line is adjusting using the units of, of centimeter, um, that margin. And as it says here, it's top right, bottom left. Uh, is the order of these these numbers. So that's how I tweak that. Okay, then so there's our our final. Um, and uh, just I just want to note the one one last little thing is you probably you you might be like writing a paper or creating presentations in I don't know PowerPoint or something like that. Um, and, and what you always want to do is have the highest res version of this. So since we we're assigning this to a oops assigning this to a plot object, we can use the gg save command to save that object as a PNG. Okay, so at the very end of my code, uh, very end of that last stack that you saw, I am I am using gg save to save that uh, out to my file system. And we see it down here. Graph final is is saved, um, and as and the, the last slide, I've just got a couple uh, gratuitous links. This um, these two links uh, from Hadley Wickham uh, are just really really nice. This data visualization is a very literate stepping through um, of of uh, using uh, ggplot. Um, this uh, this chapter from uh, the, uh, 
uh, actually the entire book, this, this is his, this is sort of like the Bible of Gigi Plot. He really goes into depth uh, in how Gigi Plot works. And it's, it's, and both of these are online. This chapter and the, the entire book are online. Um, I don't know if the third edition is actually available yet in print, but it, the third, he usually writes his books online first and then, uh, and then prints them. And then there's this other thing that you might find interesting. Uh, it's a kind of a, a detailed version of this sort of tutorial where he takes a standard data set and he just does everything with it. Um, and so it's the only caution is it's a little old. I mean, this date says 2014. He's actually updated it in 2016. Um, it looks pretty good, but it's um, uh, there's a million steps to it. Um, so anyways, that is the, that's the deal. Are there any questions? I did most of the talking here and didn't give much time for people to ask questions, but I'm happy to take questions if people have them. How many people do we still have on? Excuse me here. We got a number of people, a number of people from class. Um, hey, there's Ann. How you doing, Ann? Um, John. <laughs> so. What's, what sort of I, questions do people have? Um, it's Brenda. Um, yeah. I had a question on where you did the label expression. Oh, are, yeah. Right? Sure. Let, um, me, let me scroll up to where I did that, right in here. The scale fill manual. Yep. Yes. I mean, is that just, I know it's in GG plot, but is that, is there any other package you have installed, or is that just all part of no, no. base so, or... Okay, so yeah, so the, the expression function, is, so first of all, scale fill manual is a ggplot thing, okay? Okay. Um, this use of expression is an R thing, okay? That's, and it's not something I understand very well, and it's different than eval, okay? It's, there's a okay. function called eval, which is basically, I'm giving you expression, evaluate it, okay? Um, I'm telling okay. you this thing is something to evaluate. This is different than that. This is sort of a, a funky thing where it's rendering the, um, it's it, like, for the parts that are not in the quotes and, and are separated by that tilde. And, and in monkeying around with this, you could do it in a couple of different ways. I saw examples of where they, they have like foobar in quotes, then the tilde, and then like whatever they want it to look like this, like R squared or whatever. And it would render it in this way rather than, and it's, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not a hundred percent sure why why exactly it works. Um, okay, was it, cause my thought was, went to of course LaTeX. So I was like, is that, somehow, <laughs> you know, well, some okay, no, no, no. so that's a, okay. So that's a, that's a good question. Um, it, so knit knitter does bounce off of Pandoc, but it doesn't go to LaTeX to do, um, to do HTML. And I'm doing this going straight to HTML. Um, so I don't, yeah, it's, it's a very, and, and I should note, I don't, I, I do believe this works in LaTeX as well. Um, I like to do these slides. It, I, I call them like infinite page. I use Slidey to get my infinite page HTML slides. Um, I don't like being constrained vertically. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyways, but that's, yeah, that's a, this is a fairly recent, I, it's a recent thing. I did it four years, I made this work four years ago. I forgot how I did it. Um, and then I had to relearn it um, to, to, to actually. So the last couple of years I've been doing this demo, I've just been doing the R up, R up carrot two, which is kind of, it's lying when you say, oh, look, we've fully implemented the, econo the economist, but I don't like doing that. Yeah, Any other yeah. questions? There's, there's other funky things in here. Um, the things to pay attention to, I think, are the fact that we've got, um, first of all, even though it's very, very simple here, 
you will you will find nice code that has a it'll start with a tidyverse stack where it's doing transform or tidyverse pipeline where it's doing data transformations and then it'll hand it off to a ggplot stack here we've already done our economy we've already got the economist data data frame so we're doing a very simple handing it off to here the alternative that i could have shown is you just uh, as your first parameter in ggplot in your ggplot function you would have that data frame this is 90% of the time for courses like you know intro to data math and whatever you'll see it that way although Kristen Bennett has been doing it more recently like this okay the more tidyverse like way just to training wheels on uh, tidyverse um, but it's it's a, a reason for getting used to this tidyverse approach is uh, you can do your tweaking of your data in your essentially in your plot pipeline without having to create another data frame okay otherwise you'd have to create you know my my plot data frame <laughs> and then feed it to this no why don't you just say i you know i've got my my starting data frame i'm going to tweak it a couple different ways maybe remove you know, use select to remove some columns use use filter to move some rows and then launch it into my ggplot okay um other questions i can make up more <laughs> there's some very subtle use throughout this of the backslash n um to get that effect this this ordering here the scale color manual this can be very annoying. Uh, you, you, you you might start off thinking that you know what the order should be. So you select your six colors and you may have to totally change them around to get the colors that you want. This is something I have had trouble with in uh, other things. Okay. So this, um, uh, this is recorded. I'm going to actually shut it down now I'm going to stop my sharing and I'm going to stop my recording thanking everybody